So it's one thing to make a big, complicated animal eco simulation game like Wolf Quest 3 and make it all work well and run well and not uh, buggy, everything behaves how you want it to be, and we're getting close to that point. Um, but then it's another challenge on top of that to make such a game run smoothly on a wide range of computers. So the past few weeks we've been focusing a lot on optimization, which means focusing on all the different aspects of the game and analyzing how well, how fast they run and what we can do to make them run better and faster and smoother. So to do this, we spent a lot of time looking at the profiler in Unity, which is, you can see here scrolling along the bottom as I play the game, it shows all the operations that are happening in the game and how fast they're operating and what that adds up to in terms of the time required to render each frame of the game. Now our goal is for the game to run at 60 frames per second on as many computers as possible. And that means each frame can only use 15 milliseconds to render everything, the entire view um, of the game world and run all the code necessary to run the simulation and all the gameplay. Everything has to be completed in 15 milliseconds over and over and over again to run smoothly at 60 frames per second. Now you can see in the profiler here that that's actually not happening, that um, here in the CPU graph, um, it's more like um, 20, 20, 22 milliseconds, which means more like a frame rate of 45 frames per second. Um, that's actually right now because in the editor, there's a lot of background work going on. And when we actually build the game to an app, there's a great deal of code optimization that goes on. So we actually gain a fair bit of performance there. So we can't, this is not a reliable indicator of the actual performance, but we can break down all the functions that are happening and drill down and see what's taking more time or less time and focus on what we need to optimize and then try some optimization and then look at it and see how it works. But then we actually have to do a build and, and run the profiler from that in order to see the actual effect and the actual performance in the game. So this is a lot of um, analysis, digging down, drilling down, trying to identify the cause of things, looking it up to see what functions are being called, and figuring out ways to, to optimize those, to make them more efficient, to find alternate ways of doing things. And so in today's blog post, um, which I hope you'll read below, Tommy, our lead unit developer, and Nick, who's been on the project for about five months now, has been doing a variety of things, including optimization. And so they each talk about some things they've been doing to help the game run better. So for example, Nick overhauled the wayfinding system uh, that Tommy actually created a year and a half ago. He, once we saw how big the world was and how many different animals and animal herds we had moving around the map. So, so he thought up some better ways to handle the, the large map size and all the animals. Um, and again, he talks about it in the, in the text below, so uh, I encourage you to read that. But basically he developed a level of detail system, which we use for a lot of models in that they are more detailed models when you're up close. And then as they're farther away, they shift to lower polygon models because you don't need that much detail and so it's faster to render them and so you gain efficiencies that way. So he took the same idea to the wayfinding system and so when the computer, uh, when an animal is looking, you know, trying to decide where they want to go, it, they start with kind of a, a, a low detail map of the whole world and choose an initial point to go to and then it gets more granular as they as they make kind of sub decisions to navigate exactly what course they're going to take to that map. So that was a a clever way to retain our overall wayfinding system, but make it more efficient to optimize it. Along with that, Tommy's been working on optimizing a lot of things to do with the animals. One of the big things we had was um, spikes. You can see these kind of sp these in the profile are these big spikes when animals spawn, flocks spawn and animals spawn because it takes a lot of processing time to pull those um, out of the stored data and instantiate them in the game, configure them, get them set up and off and running. So, so he spent the past week or two working on ways to optimize those in particular, those spawning spikes. And he talks about those again in the text below, um, not only with how they're spawned, but if they're despawned, if the player moves a sufficient distance away that we don't need to be tracking them as closely, they kind of switch into a, into a flock mode. So they're still moving around using next wayfinding system. And so using pooling to, to save those despawned animals in a pool and then pull them back in when the player gets closer and we want to spawn them again, that helps eliminate those 
spawning spikes. So again, he talks about those in the text. And then I have been looking at the graphics because, you know, with the original game, and then again with uh, Wolf Quest 2.7, we were kind of aiming for a mid-range computer. Uh, we have a broad audience, you know, from younger kids to young adults and, uh, and older than that. And so a wide range of computers out there and mobile devices. And uh, so we've always kind of aimed for the mid-level of graphics, which has made the optimization task easier uh, because we don't have to work as hard and figure out ways to have it work well on uh, weaker computers, but also kind of set a ceiling as far as how good the graphics could be on a better computer. So with WolfQuest 3, we set our sights higher, and uh, we've all been developing the game with um, pretty good gaming rigs with um, NVIDIA 1060 cards, and um, now we have to figure out how to scale it down to run on, on weaker computers, computers with uh, integrated graphics and mobile devices eventually. So that's been a challenge. Further complicating that has been... Um, the, you know, we're working with rural environments in Yellowstone. The forests are a certain density, even though that's really kind of at the edge of what computers can handle for runtime graphics right now. Um, so we have to look at closely at how dense our forests are, maybe dial back a little bit from how dense they really are, still retaining that idea of a, of a dense forest. Because we have got this 24-hour dynamic day-night cycle, we can't do other you know, common optimization tricks like baking the lighting and the shadows into textures, because that's much faster than trying to draw all the shadows dynamically, again, within 15 milliseconds, every frame by frame. So we've got our work cut out for us, and we've done uh, some optimizations already to this. We've got more in uh, the works. And so we've got a fair amount of work to go before we will know what the final system requirements are going to be for the game. Obviously, we want it to run on a wide range of computers and devices. And then once we see how far we can push this, then we will announce what those uh, system requirements are. So along with all these things, we're, of course, still we're, we're working on more animals. We're finding the gameplay and beta testing, and all these things are moving forward simultaneously as we get the game uh, in good shape and are ready to release into early access as soon as it's ready.